Centre-right parties were the biggest winners of the night at the expense of their left-wing opponents. There was success for the ruling parties in Germany, France and Italy. But the turnout was terrible, the lowest since direct elections for the parliament began 30 years ago. Our Europe editor, Mark Mardell, reports. From the newsstands of Paris, where the headlines are about a shockwave, triumph for the centre-right government of the president, to the streets of Madrid, where the papers see a triumph for the centre-right opposition, the story is the same. The resilience of the right-wing ruling parties in the midst of recession a drubbing for the left, whether in or out of power. Hard-right parties like Jobbik, with its slogan Hungary for the Hungarians, made some patchy gains. The centre-right, which will dominate the European Parliament, is expecting conflict. The real opposition for the next months and years will be an opposition between the traditional European-minded political groups, which want the integration and the reforms decided in Lisbon, and the extremes and the Eurosceptics. The unlikeliest victory of the night came for the Pirate Party in Sweden, not advocates of more swashbuckling, but defenders of the free download of music. Well, Mark Mardell joins me now. Um, Mark, let's look at the BNP. I mean, two seats for them, a big breakthrough for them. How much influence are they actually going to have? Well, they won't be alone. They'll be joining other nationalist anti-immigration parties in the parliament who've been newly elected from the Netherlands, from Romania, from Hungary. I don't think they will be having enough people to uh, for, have an actual formal group. And I don't think they'll have very much influence on the real business of this parliament, on, on legislation. I think what they will be able to do is what UKIP have done. And I'm not, I stress, making any comparison between the two parties at all. There's no link, no similarity, except UKIP have been incredibly effective of getting their message across because they've got seats in the place behind me. Now, the BMP will try to do the same and say we are elected representatives for the, for the first time at a, a national level, so we deserve to be heard. They will use this to try and get their message across to a wider public. Terrible turnout figures, but when you look at the, the results, you look at how it all breaks down, is there any message, any sort of pattern that the voters were following? Well, I think there is a pattern, and it's a curious one. It's that the cent not only the centre-right has done well, but the centre-right, when it's in government, when it's the government in the middle of an economic crisis, is still doing well. People at least don't feel angry with them and seem to be rewarding them, but they're not turning to the socialists. You would think, perhaps, that it was an open goal for the socialists to say, look at the problems the free market causes, let's have more rules, look at the insecurity people are suffering, let's give them more protection. They haven't benefited from that. They haven't got the message across and they're really going to be scratching their heads about what on earth went wrong. Our Europe editor, Mark Mardell, thank you very much. The time is just after 20 past one, our top story this lunchtime. Labour has suffered one of the worst results in its history in the European elections. They were beaten into third place by the Conservatives and the UK Independence Party. Coming up...